Greetings, students of the Force and Acolytes of the Galaxy, and welcome back to the Archives. Selecting an apprentice for Sith is a far more involved process than it is with a Jedi, where the Jedi have an entire class of aspiring younglings for them to choose from that have all been raised and trained in the ways of the Force. Sith have to be a lot more hands-on with how they choose their own successor. This was especially important during the days of the Rule of Two era, when the pickings were scarce, and finding a successor strong enough to be worthy of training was a lot more difficult while while trying to maintain a proper cover. And of course, finding a suitable apprentice did not always guarantee that they would become a Sith. Darth Plagueis experienced this difficulty soon after killing his own master. In fact, Darth Plagueis would not take on an apprentice or even attempt to until he located and found the young Palpatine. Though Sheev showed incredible promise, there had been doubts in Plagueis' mind as to whether or not the boy would be able to fulfill his role properly. There actually was a certain point in time where Plagueis formulated a contingency plan in case Palpatine proved unsuitable, and the replacement he chose was the Jedi Master, Dooku. So, why did Darth Plagueis consider starting over and replacing Palpatine as his apprentice? And what specifically drove him to believe that Dooku was the best option? Also, why did Darth Plagueis consider turning Dooku to the dark side anyway, even if not taking him on as an apprentice? Well today my friends, let's open up the holocron and discover the secret. It's important to remember that Plagueis had no intention of being replaced. He could sense the flow of time and of the force, and realize that the revenge of the Sith was close at hand, and that he might very well be the Jedi's undoing. He believed that he would facilitate the death of the Jedi, and only needed an apprentice to follow him, never succeed him. At the time, Plagueis still deemed it necessary though to have a close, like-minded ally, which is why he did not assume the role as the one Sith. In fact, his own master Tenebris had taken on another Bith as an apprentice behind Plagueis' back. Plagueis, though, ultimately defeated this false Sith known as Venomous. After Venomous begged to become Plagueis' apprentice, he declined the offer, stating that one day he would eventually be betrayed by him. Originally, when the Dark Lord found Palpatine, he only wanted to use him as a political tool. But everything changed when Plagueis sensed the massive potential in the young Palpatine as he butchered his entire family. From this day on, Palpatine and Plagueis were one. Although the Dark Lord would eventually meet up and encounter Jedi Master Dooku some years later, something had changed, and Plagueis had grown to be cautious around Darth Sidious. He believed he was unstable and perhaps a bit too ambitious for his own good. Plagueis began to withhold secrets from Palpatine and train him less and less, making him more of an errand boy. This was the main reason Plagueis had considered replacing him, as he was slowly becoming far too powerful. Not just within the Force, but also the political sphere. Plagueis had placed him in the position of Naboo's senator, and Sidious was working his way up the political ladder soon to be chancellor. The original plan was for Sidious to elect Plagueis as his co-chancellor, with Palpatine in the public eye, as he had an overwhelmingly positive public perception, and was excellent at gaining friends. His reputation was phenomenal, while Plagueis was reclusive as he studied in his laboratory endlessly, leaving Sidious to do all the work, with Plagueis expected to reap the rewards. This caused Sidious to become frustrated with his old master, and unfortunately for Sidious, he was unable to hide his true emotions from his master, and Plagueis believed it was time to set up a contingency plan. As the Darth Plagueis novel states, he felt certain that Sidious would evolve into a commanding Sith, but just now the young Naboo was drunk with power and prone to make mistakes. Dooku was the obvious choice here, as we are told that Plagueis had actually met Dooku and Qui-Gon once before. Dooku and Qui-Gon Jinn had actually been the Jedi to intercede on a plan of Darth Tenebris. Plagueis' master had engineered some events that would cause interplanetary descent between the systems of the expansion region. But due to the interference by these two Jedi, several of the key players in this game were sent to prison, and ultimately, they ended up sabotaging the Sith Lord's plans. And this is the moment where Dooku was placed on Plagueis' radar. After a short conversation with the former Count, Plagueis' interest in Dooku assumed a new urgency, as he realized from the way that Dooku showed his discontent with the Jedi, letting Plagueis know that he was ripe for the taking. The novel says this, even so, Plagueis found himself wondering whether a dissatisfied Jedi like Dooku could be insurance against a reversal of fortune. 
some unexpected event that would rob him of Sidious, or perhaps turn to the dark without formal enlistment and manipulate it into instigating a schism of the Jedi Order. Plagueis also had a deep respect for Dooku, something that was rare for Plagueis at all. He knew how powerful he was in the Force and how skilled he was with the lightsaber. Dooku was the perfect candidate for a plug-and-play. An apprentice, should Sidious fail. What's even more fascinating, though, is that Darth Plagueis was ready to enlist Dooku as a Dark Jedi and Dark Acolyte, even if Sidious was never replaced. As stated, Plagueis toyed with the idea of manipulating Dooku to the dark side in order to have him cause a big enough distraction and distract the Council by interplanetary conflict, or worse, another schism in the Jedi. What's even more incredible than this is this was Darth Plagueis' plan before crafting the Clone Wars. His plan was first another Great Jedi Schism. Palpatine was of course aware of Darth Plagueis' eye on Dooku, which is ultimately what would inspire him to take Dooku as an apprentice after Maul failed on Naboo. The perfect opportunity to completely corrupt the Jedi that already had a dark twinkle in his eye. Dooku, just like Anakin Skywalker, had been long watched by the Sith. The Sith are opportunists. This is how the Sith remain so powerful for so long. Unlike the Jedi that are strict and hold to a doctrine and protocol, the Sith allow themselves to be malleable and change if the situation calls. This skill is exemplified by Plagueis in this situation. By somebody who did not want to be replaced, he definitely wanted to keep an eye out for any changing behaviors in his apprentice that might lead to either his own demise or Sidious's. Dooku's Jedi training would serve him well, and would have translated perfectly to skills in the dark side, which of course they eventually did. It is far more likely that Dooku actually wouldn't have betrayed Plagueis like Sidious did, and he would have become his true apprentice to the Sith's rise. We know that Dooku wanted to betray Sidious, but would Plagueis be able to continue to manipulate Dooku into believing that they were doing all of this for the right reasons? That question we will pose to you. And as always, my friends, thank you so much for watching, and may the Force be with you. Exit our archives, we'd like to introduce you to some of Onasaber's new monthly deals and products. Onasaber is one of the industry leaders in producing brand new, high quality replica and custom saber hilts. Hilts for the bravest warriors our galaxy has to offer. Onasaber provides high quality, professionally crafted hilts to be used by the cruelest harbingers of darkness and the bravest soldiers of the light. Throughout the month of July, they are offering a wide array of special deals. Not only can you receive 30% off and free shipping with your order, as well as use code STUPENDOUS for an additional $15 off, but you can now create your own custom engraving. Ona Saber's new Wrathbearer Saber comes with the option of engraving your own word or phrase on the hilt up to 10 words long. Whether you're an avid collector, looking for a gift for a friend, or a tool to fight the forces of light and dark, check out Ona Saber and use the weapon to bring peace or destruction. Thanks again to Ona Saber for sponsoring today's video, and I hope you guys have a great day.